we're headed out once again on Okanagan Lake. We'll see if we can find a bourbon or two. It'll be interesting to find out whether or not their habits are similar to summer fall. Are they in shallower? Like where are they going to be type thing, right? So I'm uh, really intrigued to find out. That's a fish on. Oh, yeah. We got something 114 feet. Oh my god. Yes. What the heck is that? Back. We're headed out once again on Okanagan Lake. Let's we'll see if we can find a bourbon or two. And, uh, don't really fish them very much through the winter, but uh, we're going to go give her a shot and see. And uh, it'll be interesting to find out whether or not their habits are similar to summer fall. Like, are they out deep? Or are they in shallower? Like, where are they going to be? Type thing, right? So. I'm really intrigued to find out. I'm just looking on the depth sounder here trying to find where a nice ledge comes up out of the main basin of the lake and then reaches a flat so you got the deep basin ridge coming up onto another shelf that's what those bourbon really like they like especially come evening like right now they're gonna start moving up on that ledge come into the shallower flat, start feeding. So a lot of times those uh, shelves, if you can find them, piggy banks, because the burbot are just coming right up on there. Coming up to feed, so nothing will be. Really coming up. 105 feet right here, we'll give her a whirl. So all we're using is hot jig, salmon jig, whatever. Tip with some prawn and a dew worm, that's it. Super calm out today, so it's gonna be pretty sweet. Let her go all the way down to the bottom. I always try and stay on, like when I'm jigging, I always try and stay vertical all the time. Keep my line straight up and down beside me. Couple fish showing up. All right, we're down. So once I hit bottom, what I like to do is just give it a couple bounces right off the bottom. Like smash that jig right off the bottom. Make a bunch of noise. Honk it off the bottom, then you're going to bring it up a little bit, maybe a foot off the bottom, and just kind of give it nice light jigs. A couple jigs, let it sit there, wait. A couple light jigs, let it sit, that's kind of all you're going to do. Most of the time when they come in, all you're going to feel is like a little, almost like a little trout kind of nibbling on it. It's not very often I get uh, bourbon bites that are fast and hard and ferocious. It's just it's almost like a sturgeon. Oh 
about something. I don't know what it is. Big old pike minnow. See if we can find that bourbon. We're on a really nice drop right now. Squawfish are hanging around. I'm pretty sure there's going to be some bourbon. Sun's just going down, so it's going to get. If it's going to get interesting. It's going to get interesting now. Where the bourbon? Where the bourbon? Where the bourbon? Gotta find these little devils. Gotta find them. I don't know if they're really shallow or what. Right now in that little canal between Rattlesnake and the mainland, so it's like 30 feet deep, 26 feet deep here. Maybe some of those winter spawning vermin are traveling through this canal. I don't know. We're gonna find out. It is absolutely miserable out here today. One minute the wind's blowing from the south, the next minute it's blowing from the north. There's squalls of snow everywhere. It's cold. It's a great day to come out and look for bourbon. Alright, so we've got uh, quite a few fish on the sounder right down to the very bottom here, so we're going to see if we can't pick one up. down there right now. Not far from my gear. That's a fish on. Oh yeah. We got something. Alright guys, apologies for the shaky footage. Uh, I did not bring my regular tripod set up, so that is why we're dealing with a bouncing camera. It's a trout. It's a nice trout. Oh my god. Yes. Ooh. Yeah, baby. That's a beauty trout. 114 feet of water. Jigging away. Oh man, that's a dandy. Holy smokes. Jigging for bourbon doesn't get better than that. You can put this guy to sleep. You can make a nice meal. Holy. Look at that. 
That's it. He's done. All right. Thought I had a burbot there. And uh, big rainbow. So those big rainbows are way down there, 114 feet feeding, which is crazy, but they're there. All right. Woo! Let's see if we can uh, hook up another rainbow or maybe a burbot. Let's get this on. little drop off here. It's the beauty of a trout like that. You just never know with those things like way down at 120 feet of water, 100 feet of water right on the bottom. This time of year seems kind of strange but uh, picked up quite a few trout like that down on the bottom digging. So it's a thing for sure. Gonna take a little trip up here onto Rattlesnake Island. The wind picked up and uh, it's pretty nasty out there. So I'm gonna give it a bit of time to hopefully chill out. Never actually been up here. And look at that, there's one of the little mini golf. This used to, uh, back in the day, they were gonna do a development amusement park type thing up here. The amusement park that didn't really ever happen. There's another little mini golf setup. Tons of history on this uh, here island. Tons and tons of history. Pretty crazy. the old pyramid used to be or was gonna be I don't know if it actually I think it was up at one point There's the uh, official rattlesnake pit. All right. A bit of a choppy uh, chop going on out here. Oh boy. My goodness.
back of the shack now. Now I just cleaned this fish out and I want to show you something really cool. Check this out. Here's the beautiful rainbow that I got. This fish was exactly 20 inches long. Just beautiful. Like look at that red meat in there. Like that is absolutely awesome. Now take a look at this. This was inside of its belly. It had one, two, it actually had three kokanee um, inside its belly. The third one was uh, too nasty. Take a look at that young juvenile kokanee right there. Now if you take a look at that, it's got like some shades of purple, blue, maybe red, kind of all through it. Um, yeah, you can really see it there. Over to the other side, maybe even some shades of greens in there. Um, however, now if I take my lure and I put it up next to this uh, kokanee, like you're gonna see how similar these things both look. Like, look at that. I mean, you can see why these trout are hitting this uh, jig. Um, especially with it, you know, has a little bit of prawn tipped onto it. It's a pretty deadly combination. And, uh, you know, even though we were, we were fishing for burbot mainly, um, when you're using lures like this in the big lakes and you're jigging down on the bottom, you're going to pick up the odd rainbow. Um, I've picked up several rainbows and, uh, jigging for burbot. So, Yeah. Give it a whirl. All right, guys. So that was it for today's video. That was pretty cool, though. I like seeing those kokanee inside that trout. That trout for Okanagan Lake is uh, maybe average. They do get a lot bigger in, the, in there. Hope you guys all enjoyed this video. And uh, like, share, subscribe, all that kind of thing. 85% of people who watch my videos are not subscribed. So just hit that button, man. That's all you got to do. Just, it really does help my channel out. You all be safe out there. Until the next one. Stay wild, stay fuel, baby. Let's go. But yeah, I wanted to show you guys. I uh, just finished filleting this trout and take a look at this meat. It doesn't get much better than that. Feeding on all those kokanee, that's why they're all red like that.